Thank you so much. I think my intro was about 15 minutes, so I may not have much time left. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to everybody for remaining for the very last presentation of the day. I very much appreciate your time. I'm going to introduce you to Chimeric Therapeutics. For those of you that are not familiar with us, we are a clinical stage cell therapy company focused in oncology. And so clinical stage really meaning that we have now moved out of mouse models and actually are in clinical trials with our assets. Our mission at Chimeric Therapeutics is right here. We are committed to bringing the promise of cell therapy to life for more patients with cancer. And for many, I get a lot, I get a lot of questions, what does this actually mean? And I'll give you a little perspective of what this means for me and my team. I've worked in, self, I've worked in oncology drug development for my entire career. Evolution of cancer therapies has been fairly straightforward. We started back in the 40s with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy was non-targeted therapy. We just gave you toxic therapy, hoping to kill anything in its path. We moved on in the 90s, and we were very excited with the introduction of targeted therapies. And so for the first time, we were actually targeting the tumor that we were trying to get to. So this was the introduction of targeted therapies. In 2010, we congratulated ourselves with the introduction of immunotherapies because for the first time we were actually using a patient's own immune system to attack their cancer. And with each of these steps, we've improved the outcomes for patients with cancer. We've gone from chemotherapies, and what you're looking at is very simply at the top left, 100% of patients are alive over the course of time with cancer, how they pass away. Chemotherapy had minimal impact against that. Targeted therapies improved short-term survival more than long-term survival. And then we saw long-term survival improve a bit with immunotherapies. In 2017, I worked on the approval of the very first CAR T-cell therapy. CAR T-cell therapies were actually the first time we had combined targeting. We were targeting both the tumor we were trying to get to as well as a person's immune system and how we were going to leverage their immune system to get to their specific type of cancer. And what we saw on the left-hand side, you see PET scans of patients that received CAR T cell therapies. And on the right hand, you see what all of a sudden we were seeing in terms of outcomes. We were actually seeing patients stay alive longer, both in the short term and in the long term. Patients that received CAR T cell therapies in very early clinical trials have been followed for more than 10 years. We now know that those patients that became complete responders, so their cancer completely went away with their CAR T cell therapy in early days, remain cancer free. That led to a scientific publication earlier this year where we were able to finally conclude we can cure certain types of cancer using these therapies. So the mission for us is really all about this. It is about going beyond the existing types of, types of cancer that we know we can cure with these therapies and bringing these types of outcomes to more patients with cancer. Our team is, is really where we started with this. And our team has worked in this cell therapy market, which is anticipated to be the fastest growing area in oncology drug development over the course of the next decade. What you see here is in 2020, the market was worth about a billion dollars. By 2030, it will be, it's anticipated to be worth over $20 billion. And you can see the growth at 31% CAGR. Compare that to how we expect oncology drug development to generally grow at 8%. So very significant growth in this area is anticipated over the course of the next 10 years, really because of what we're seeing with these outcomes. I mentioned my team, and this is really the starting spot for Chimeric. It is one of the areas that makes us incredibly different. I have a small team of people that all have extensive experience and expertise in this area. We come from the top cell therapy companies in the world, and we've launched over four of the six approved CAR T cell therapies that exist in the United States today. So very much a group of people that have shown that they know how to get this done and can do this successfully. The team has then brought together what we believe is both an industry-leading innovative pipeline and portfolio, as well as a diversified one. What we've done is we've consciously set out a strategy to bring together the best that exists in terms of science out there. Our assets are novel in design, so we are not trying to follow and be the 10th something to market. We really are looking to be the first to market with our assets. We use both NK and T cells in our assets, 
And we use what's known as autologous and allogeneic cell sources. And what that means is either it's a, it's a therapy that is derived directly from cells inside one patient, or it's therapy that is derived from cells that come from a healthy donor. And this is what our pipeline looks like today. This pipeline actually differentiates us in the cell therapy space across multiple companies that are working in the space. And you can see by leveraging NK and T cells, by leveraging auto and allo therapies, our portfolio is very differentiated. I'll give you some quick highlights of where we are because I started by telling you we're a clinical stage company. With that comes clinical data. So I'll give you some insight into how we're actually doing with our assets as we've moved into clinic with them. I'll start with our NK cell therapies. And so these are what we refer to as allogeneic therapies or off-the-shelf therapies. What you see drawn out here very simply is how they work. We get cells from a healthy donor. We take those cells. We isolate the NK cells. We engineer them. We freeze them in bags, so multiple bags. We put them in a freezer until a, a, a patient actually requires them. And so they all start from a healthy donor. Our NK cell platform is from Case Western University in Ohio. This is where it was developed. It was actually developed with the ability and with the forethought to overcome some of the challenges that are inherent in NK cell development. And you see many of them listed here, all the starting at how we use healthy universal donors, all the way through to how do we actually manufacture the cells, make sure we have enough cells, the cells are staying alive, so that they can actually be effective for cancer patients. And this work was published in Nature a number of years ago. We took all of that and we moved into a phase one clinical trial, which you see highlighted here. It was a small dose escalation trial, and what we were able to set out, uh, our initial objective was for safety. We were able to establish safety in all nine patients that were treated across the three different dose levels, and able to establish there was no GVHD, which is graft versus host disease. Essentially what that means is I'm giving you somebody else's cells. We want to know you're not going to reject them. So this did not happen, which was a great thing. We were also able to establish persistence and expansion, which basically just means the cells were staying alive long enough to do their job in a patient. And then came the important pieces. Although this was very small early stage trial, what we saw was very impressive activity signals, particularly in the blood cancer patients. Three blood cancer patients were treated. All three had acute myeloid leukemia which is a very severe type of leukemia. The outcome is generally not good, particularly after patients try their first round of therapy. Here what we saw was all three patients had a response to the therapy that came out over 100 days. And very notably, we've had one patient who actually has had a complete response to therapy. So essentially, this was a young 33-year-old woman she went into the trial with acute myeloid leukemia. She tried every other available therapy to her. Nothing had worked. That's how she wound up on the clinical trial. She took the cells on day 0 and 14, started to have a response by day 28, so one month in. By three months in, she had a complete response. Complete response meaning there were no more visible signs or no more detectable signs of cancer in her blood. It was gone. We actually, at 15 months, this was published, so that was earlier, uh, you know, last year this was published. And in talking to her clinician a number of weeks ago, we actually know this patient remains in complete remission, so her cancer has not come back. She's now 26 months out. So this has been an incredible story with our therapy. This has actually led to some very rapid interest and in development in this particularly, in, the, in these NK cells. What we've seen is, although we loved the, the, the response that the one young woman had, we actually know we want all patients to have that. So what we looked for was what could we do to ourselves to be able to enhance the efficacy so more patients were having a response like the young woman. We've put it in combination with an agent called Vecticertib, and very rapidly this has been moved into a new clinical trial that's been approved by the FDA and is already open at Case Western. 
We plan to treat 12 patients across the course of the next year, and assuming that we see an enhancement of the efficacy signal, we will be moving from here towards a registration pathway and commercialization of this combination. So a lot of excitement going on around these NK cells. In our, in our pipeline, we also have CAR T cell therapies. CAR T cell therapies essentially are cell therapies that are derived from a patient's own cells. So this is where we take the cells out of a patient, we ship them off for engineering and manufacturing, and then we send them right back to the same patient. And that patient gets those engineered cells as a CAR T cell therapy. Our first CAR T cell therapy had great preclinical work. This is where we were able to establish, we believed it was going to have a lot of promise as it moved into clinic. It's now in a phase one clinical program at City of Hope Hospital in California. And what you see here is highlighted some of the very early results from that. Now that study is not yet complete, so we are waiting for more data, particularly as patients get higher dose levels. But at the very early dose levels, we were already seeing that 70%, so this was five out of seven patients, were achieving disease control, which means their glioblastoma, and anybody that's ever known anybody that has been diagnosed with glioblastoma knows what a deadly disease that is, glioblastoma had actually stopped all growth for this period of time. So again, we're very anxious to see how this one continues as we dose escalate. Our second CAR T cell therapy, so this again is a cell therapy we make from a patient's own cells, is a CDH17 CAR T cell therapy. This particular CAR T cell therapy comes from the University of Pennsylvania, which actually is responsible for probably a lot of the worldwide interest and acclaim around cell therapies. The University of Pennsylvania team under Dr. Carl June were the first to cure patients with these therapies. This is uh, preclinical data. Their preclinical data was published earlier this year in Nature Cancer. And the team at the University of Pennsylvania have been optimizing this asset for over a decade. We're in the final stages of readiness to get this one into clinic. We believe we'll have this in clinic next year and are very much looking forward to what this can give patients that have gastrointestinal tumors, colorectal cancer, gastric cancer, and neuroendocrine tumors. So with that, that's where we land from our portfolio and our pipeline. You can see our very rapid growth in sort of just over 18 months. We now have gone, we've gone from one asset, we now have seven assets in development. We've gone from having one clinical trial, we now have three clinical trials ongoing with additional trials planned for next year. We now have two trials that have shown us positive signals in their early stages. And we're exploring development across 10 different types of cancer to really optimize our long-term opportunity for patients and the company. From a milestone perspective, since you know, the uh, beginning of the fiscal year, we've certainly already hit a number of the milestones we've set out for ourselves. Over the course of the next six to 12 months, there are key inflection points for us as we continue to be able to come forward with our clinical data. So lots more milestones that we are looking to achieve, very much focused on those clinical outcomes. So this really sums it up in terms of where we are today and what we believe from an investment perspective makes us an incredible investment. Significant opportunity, seven assets in the fastest growing area of oncology drug development. Two of those assets already demonstrating strong clinical promise. Near-term value with inflection points from clinical data over the course of the next 12 to 24 months, and a team of people that have actually done this before and have that proven expertise and experience to be able to get these assets through to commercialization. I, I certainly invite any questions or uh, there's information outside if anybody has any further questions. And I thank you so much for staying with me to the end of the day and appreciate your time. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs>